You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. This Week in Futures Options streams live, so be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, This Week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Thursday. It is 1.30 p.m. Central. It is 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Do you know what's going on in the world of futures options? Well, let's find out together, shall we? It is time once again for TWIFO. This week in Futures Options, a program where we break it all down, light side, dark side, volatility, skew, all that goodness, and a whole bunch more. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, optionsinsider.com, as well as from the network upon which all of you folks are binging these days. Don't worry, there's more bandwidth where that came from, so feel free to binge your way. Tell a friend, tell someone online you don't even know. Leave a rating, a star, a comment, a like, all that stuff, review at the end of the day, does help people continue to discover the content. Of course, if you want to discover a little bit more content in your lives, you want a little bit of a present for yourself, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is a place to go. Awesome pro Q&As. Just had our good buddies on this program, Dr. Vix and Carly Garner. You folks in the pro asked for a face-off, a tete-a-tete, a debate, if you will, between the two of them. We made it happen, our first ever double pro q a it was intense i had to separate them virtually a few points they were debating about ladders upside and neck gas volatility all sorts of fun if you want to check it out for yourselves the options slash pro is the place to go that's where you also get options oddities that's where you also get live access to this and everything else we do on the network fun exclusives like the panel i did with the flow master a bunch of other folks uh, early stuff as well so we gave you the early listen and indeed early access to Options Boot Camp for next week because we will be traveling next week, so no live boot camp next week. Of course, early access to the chat I did with the folks down at the CBOE about all things Zero Day and Vol and everything else at the FIA show. Reese, that's all up there on that pro feed for you. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Get in there soon if you want to have a chance to win the March Pro Trading Crate. It's full of awesome bespoke goodies that you're not going to find anywhere else out there. Listen, our vault has some pretty unique stuff in it. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go as we keep on going. 
into the Movers and Shakers report. It's time to find out what's rallying on the light side and falling to the dark side at CME Group this week. It's time for the Movers and Shakers report. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's move, let's shake, let's rock and roll. It's a truncated holiday week, so we're not monsters. Not going to make folks come in on the old CME hot seat when everyone's busy scattering for their spring break vacation. I will be doing so as well shortly after I turn off this mic today because there are no shows. Markets, of course, closed for the Good Friday holiday tomorrow. But before we do that, listeners, let's break down what you missed or maybe what you're paying attention to out there in the world of futures options this week. It is, I would say, the closest to even we've been in some time on the Movers and Shakers report this week. It is probably 55% green, 45% red, somewhere along those lines. If you head on over to See Me Group on Twitter, or if indeed if you follow us on Twitter, and you can find this report, I should say, over there for your reading pleasure if you want to see all of the fun that goes on out there in this report in a little bit more detail. Of course, you can subscribe over there, Bantix.com, B-A-N-T-I-X.com, the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires, get this report, everything else. We don't really have a chance to get into the block trades, pace of the roll, more detail on all that sea ball stuff we're going to talk about in a second. Good stuff, Nick and his team cooking up over there. All right, since it's just me on the show today, listeners, uh, just the facts, ma'am, edition, get you in, get you informed, get you on about your way. To the light side we go. Going to mix it up. I know you thought I was going to go dark side, but, you know, can't be that predictable in life, listeners. To the light side we go. Uh, number five, we've kicked things off in energy this week. WTI up nearly 2%, 1.99% to be precise. Uh, number four from energy off to the rates, the ultra 30 year. So pretty far out on the curve, listeners, up exactly 2%. So outpacing WTI by exactly 0.01%. So one of those kind of weeks, listeners. Number three, to the ags we go now, in particular the livestock. So three spots, we've already done a lot of living. It's lean hogs up 2.17%. Then number two, to the equities, in particular the utilities sector of the S&P up 2.49%. Number one, the big dog this week, you can probably guess it is Bitcoin up 10.18%. It was number three in the other direction last week, off about 4.1%. So getting all that back and then some. Before you get all hot and bothered and say, man, they're going to start the show in crypto this week. Uh, yeah, we pretty much did all the analysis for you already. <laughs> it's only about 1,000 of the big contracts on the tape this week and only 500 of the micros. So 1,500 combined. And obviously, we know the micros don't equate to one of the bigs, so... Yeah, not a lot of volume. If you want to know what is trading out there, such as it is, it was the April 80,000s leading the dance with a whopping 207 contracts this week. 101 of those going up today. So breaking 70,000 to the upside, folks, lighting up a whole bunch of the 80,000s, 171 of the 85,000s, and 119 of the 100,000, the par calls. We're back at those again, listeners. That's where we are again in crypto. And that's going to get us to pretty much 500 almost of the pretty much 1,000 contracts that have traded this week. So unfortunately, not a lot to sink our teeth into on the crypto front this week. Maybe we'll have better luck on the dark side. Going back to the ags, number five, it's soybean meal off 3.08%. Number four, one of our former frequent offenders, can it make it back onto our list? It's certainly trying of late. Uh, number four, it's lumber off 3.45%. By the way, I have a sad story. Our old friend, Sean Smith, usual regular cohort here on this program back in the day, you'll recall his fence watch listeners where he waited a long time for lumber to come down. He ended up having to buy close to the high to build his fence. I ran into him down at the FIA conference a few weeks ago in Florida. And unfortunately his good chunk of his fence was destroyed in a storm recently. And now he's waiting the insurance company. They're all fighting over who's going to have to pay for it. So the saga that is Fence Watch, unfortunately, continues. I don't know if he's going to get them to reimburse him for the, shall we say, lofty valuation he paid for the wood to build that fence. So the saga that is Fence Watch continues, listeners, unfortunately for Sean. Uh, but number four, lumber this week off 3.45%. Number three, feeder cattle back to the livestock off 3.93%. Number two, here's one of our old friends making another reappearance. It is Nat Gas. Off 5.35%. And number one to the dark side, it is rough rice this week. You know what I'm going to say now. It's a rough week for rough rice. Off 5.62%. 
All right. Since we've done the underlying movers and shakers, it is time now, listeners. It is time for a little bit of vol moving and shaking, listeners. To the sea vol movers and shakers report we go. First, let's go light side again. Let's mix it up. Why not? Number five to the light side, listeners. Keeping it in the ags. It is soybean meal. So offending on both reports this week, listeners. Uh, the sea vol for soybean meal, 25 and about a half, up about three quarters of a point this week. Uh, number four, right behind it, we have gold. So off to the metals. You don't see gold vol moving quite a bit, but that is the case this week at about a 1321 right now. And that sea vol up a little over three quarters of a point, about 0.77. So again, not even a full point, but that's a lot for gold vol. Uh, number three, back to the ags. It is corn at a 2711, up 1.08 points on the week. Number two to the light side in sea vol this week, listeners, Nat Gas, 60.82. So feeling frothy, up. 1.84 points. And the number one light side vol mover this week, listeners, it is a three month sofa at a 74 and about a quarter, up 2.62 points. So a little bit of juice to be found in the three month sofa as we move now to the dark side, listeners. The bottom five vol losers of the week. Let's start at number five, listeners. Feeder cattle. So a lot of livestock on the reports this week. Feeder cattle, sea vol, 19.36, off about 0.6 points on the week. Number four, to the energy we go, it is heating oil at a 30.95, off 0.61. So just managing to outpace feeder cattle to the dark side. Uh, number three, to the dark side, back to the metals, this time going to copper. It is at an 18.07 right now, off about 0.71. Number two to the dark side, listeners, it is the WTI sea vol crude oil, 25.45 off, nearly a full point, about 0.9 to the dark side. And the number one sea vol dark side mover this week, listeners, live cattle, man, livestock, lighten it up this week, 16.63 off, almost a full point, 0.92 on the week. So there you go, listeners, there are your sea vol movers and shakers. For the week, as we keep on rolling, listeners, you know what? Nat Gas coming in at number two to the dark side. We have WTI coming in at number five to the light side. Nat Gas also number two on our Seaval movers and shakers. WTI and heating oil coming in on the dark side as well. I think we got to kick things off in energy this week. It's time to tap into the deep options well of black gold, Texas tea, nat gas, and more. It's time to talk energy. All right, listeners, to the world of energy we go, listeners. You know where to find this report for yourselves. Just about everything else we're going to talk about on the show today. CMEgroup.com slash TWIFO, T-W-I-F-O. That's where we're going to kick the tires and light the fires. Once there, go into that drop down and asset class. Go down three slots to energy. Then let's go down three more. Let's kick things off in that gas. Where we go from there is anyone's guess. Though probably not heating oil. Doesn't exactly set the world on fire from an options value perspective. And coming in to start the show, Nat gas threatening one and three quarters in that front future. 177 off about four cents or about 2.3% since Monday. Of course, if you go back to the end of our show last week. We have Nat Gas at number two to the dark side, off about five and a third percent on the week. In terms of paper, surprisingly active week, again, considering that uh, we're going to be closed tomorrow. Already almost 600,000 contracts on the tape, 595,000 to be precise. So that is a respectable week for Nat Gas. That's much more than we used to put in in Nat Gas. This new frame of reference for Nat Gas, where now we're 600, 700, 800, maybe a million contracts in a week is a very different beast, which is certainly fascinating in and of itself. Of that, about 42% going up in the May contract that has exactly 28 days to go. So we're going to hang out out there, listeners. The vol out there, a little bit lower, what we're just talking about in the sea vol. Remember, that sea vol is more of a kind of rolling 30-day measure, uh, which has some skew and some other things baked into it. Straight at the money vol in the May contract, 57 and a quarter, up about almost a full point. So one of the few cycles this week that is actually up from a vol perspective unless you go into end of the year that's looking a little bit frothier from a vol perspective most of the front portion of the term structure is coming in from a vol perspective except for may so maybe we have a preponderance of buying out here in may driving up the vol there i don't know let's go find out listeners uh the puts last week 3.6 percent bid this week seven percent bid so puts getting juicier this week 
that could be perhaps a clue as to what's afoot out there. The calls last week, 0.8% cheap. This week, 2% cheap. So calls getting a little bit cheaper. Not a huge evolution there. But you know what? It was the one and a half puts. That could be our culprit there, listeners. Going up 35,334 times. They are taking the top spot this week, listeners. So a hot time on the one half puts here in May. Again, going up 35,000 times and change. The big day this week was Wednesday. Nearly 14,000 going up yesterday, opening on all that. Uh, nearly 10,000 today, 9,700 already today. That's against OI of 55,000. So a lot of OI already baked in on this strike. 4,700 on Tuesday. That was closing. 7,200 on Monday opening. So a little bit of back and forth opening to closing, but it looks like mostly biased towards the opening side. Again, May, so 28 days to go. Listen, as one half puts. I don't have a price in front of me, but would you rather be a buyer or a seller of that strike? Are you feeling a little bit more dark side in that gas? I mean, we're coming into May. That's usually getting into the start of the summer driving season for gas, and then usually not a strong period seasonally for nat gas either so i can maybe see an argument for wanting some of those one half puts in your back pocket of course producers and others want to hedge at that level as well uh, intriguing stuff either way a ton of paper going up out there and maybe one of the reasons why the vol is staying jacked in this cycle folks are net buying a bunch of these one half puts that was definitely the big dog out here this week but you know what not to be outdone there is some upside going up the two calls so Kind of a bit of a push-pull this week. You like better the one-half puts or the two calls, or maybe you like that strangle. Maybe you want to sell it. What would you rather do out there, listeners? Uh, almost 30,000 of the two calls going up this week as well. 29,208 of those bad boys going up this week. Looks like a lot of people getting the heck out of Dodge on those, though. Um, Tuesday was the big day there. Almost 11,000, mostly closing. So maybe some folks deciding discretion, the better part of valor to the upside. 6,000 on Wednesday, again closing. Almost 7,000 today. Uh, we don't know the net OI positioning. That's against an OI of about 30,000. So there certainly is a lot to take off if they want to take some off. And about 5,200 on Monday, opening there. So looks like net we have folks bailing on the twos and opening on the one-half puts. So intriguing stuff. That's probably also why we're seeing uh, the call skew coming in a little bit on the calls and getting a little bit jacked on the puts out there. So intriguing stuff out there. Again, not entirely surprising given the the action we're at right now, which is almost literally bisecting those two strikes, right? Right, right, right about one and three quarters out there right now. So intriguing stuff out there. And then beyond that, we also have action in the one half puts in the June expiration cycle. That goes away in about 61 days out there. Those doing about 22,000 contracts this week, 21,958 to be precise. Actually, it just ticked 998 now. So almost exactly. At 22,000 listeners. The big day for those one-half puts in June was yesterday. 9,500 going up yesterday. Looks like slightly opening by two contracts. <laughs> so a lot of churn on this strike this week, which is interesting. 7,000 on Tuesday and about 5,500 today. 70 only on Monday. So light day on Monday. That's all against an OI of about 70,000. If I'm going out to June, depth of summer, I'm probably definitely more of a buyer than a seller. Again, I'll have to go look up some prices. Now, that could be easier said than done if those are extremely juicy. But uh, intriguing stuff out there. Again, June, not exactly a boom time for Nat Gas. <laughs> so I could see why maybe you want to have some of those puts in your back pocket for a rainy day out. Those aren't far enough for you. How about the one quarter puts in June this week, listeners? Going up 15,000, almost 16,000 times. The big day also Wednesday, 6,200. Looks like maybe slightly closing. So. Maybe some folks rolling the Junes up to that. That would be early, though, to be rolling a June one-quarter put up to the one-and-a-half puts. Doesn't make a lot of sense, even though the numbers for today are almost equal. 5,500 the one-half puts in June, 5,400 the one-quarter puts. So it does seem like there might be some vertical action afoot there today, which is kind of interesting. Let's scroll a little bit, see if we find any other interesting and or aberrant prints. Nat gas sometimes is good for some interesting, crazy upside. Usually we find that more in nat gas or in gold. That's where the funky 10,000 by 50,000 by 30,000 funky three ways and other things go up. Not as much in nat gas. Looks like the two puts are active right now out here in October, listeners, doing about 11,000 contracts 
Looks like mostly closing. Opening about 3,000 on Monday. Closing about 3,400 on Tuesday. Closing again 3,300 on Wednesday. 1,700 going up today against an OI of 45,000. So it seems like some folks maybe bailing on those two puts in October. Worth noting, the future in October, listeners, is trading right about a two and a half. So before you jump up, say they're in the money puts. No, future a little bit different out there. Again, seasonality, a big deal out here in NatGas. Speaking of big deals, uh, the other big deal out here in the energy complex is typically our old pal WTI. Let's check in on that now, listeners. Go into that drop down, pop out of NatGas, and then we're going to check in on our old friend WTI. Two slots right above it. A WTI right now, like we said, feeling a little bit frothy this week. Net on the week, it is our number five upside mover of course uh, this week alone it's up 3.1 percent or about two and a half handles from monday hanging out at about an 83 12 out there listeners so intriguing stuff out there in wti did you have some of this upside i think as we talked to dan last week he was kind of surprised that we were threatening an 80 handle at the time in wti now obviously well above it right now did you have a little bit of a resurgence in wti I know unrest in that region is usually cause for a little bit of upside in the black stuff, but still, 83 handle out there. Does that surprise you, or is that kind of what you expected? In terms of volume, we're kind of back to the usual level here in WTI, 463,000, so a pretty decent week, 400, 450, 440. That's usually what we tend to expect, so a little bit above it, but nothing crazy out here, and again, 41.6% of that paper going up in the May contract. That's about 20 days to go. We're going to hang out out there. The Volvair, a little bit shy of a 23, 22.95 off about 0.6 on the week. Let's see what's happening from a skew perspective out here, listeners. Last week, the puts nearly 2% bid. This week, the puts 4.2% bid. So getting a little bit juicier. The calls last week, 1% bid. This week, swinging the other way, 2.4% cheap. So... A little bit of evolution, puts getting a little bit more bid, calls getting cheaper, but nothing crazy cakes out here in WTI. If you go a little bit farther down the term structure, if you go out to March, not even December, usually it's December, but skip right past December, go out to March, you have the puts in March, 13.1% bid, the calls 7% offered. So that future's at a 76 right now. So, wow. Longer term, folks, appear to be fading (laughs) <laughs> these WTI levels, at least from how the options skew is setting up. Let's go back to May, see what's trading right now, listeners. And it looks like it was the 80 puts, the 80 puts going out in 20 days that were leading the dance out here this week to the tune of a little bit shy of 13,000, 12,585. So again, Kind of shows you how broad the volume is in WTI. The leader is only a little over 12,000. Actually, just ticked up now, almost about 13,000 contracts. But still, not a ton on the tape. These 80 puts, again, doing about 13,000 contracts. The big day was Wednesday, 4,200, slightly opening there. 3,400 on Monday, again, opening. 3,000 on Tuesday, also opening. 2,200 today. That's against an OI of 70, about 7,500, so... Could be opening again today as well. Seems like folks have a bit of a hunger for these May 80 puts out there. And then right behind it, we have the 85 calls. So what do you like better, listeners? 20 days to go, 80 puts or 85 calls. Doing about 6,000 contracts today. That's almost exactly half of the total volume for the week, which is a little bit shy of 12,000 contracts. Tuesday, or excuse me, Monday, we did about 3,000. Tuesday, 1,500. Wednesday, 1,500. Opening all week long on these 85 calls. Uh, today's volume 6,000 against an OI of a little over 11,000. So it could indeed be opening today as well. 85s versus 80 puts. Which one do you like better? Maybe you like them both. Maybe you like a little bit of some collar action, listeners. I'm curious. Hit us up. Let us know. Right behind the 80 puts. If those are a little bit too close to the fire for you, how about the May 75 puts? Right behind it, about 11,000 of those trading this week. 3,200 on Monday. That was the big day. Slightly opening there. You know what? Almost 3,200 again on Tuesday as well. Right behind it, though. Slightly closing. So opening to closing. One day trade. Certainly possible. We've seen a lot of that these days. 1,500 on Wednesday. Almost 3,000 today against an OI of about 7,700 out there. Let's scroll a little bit past the May cycle. If you like your 
contracts expiring in four days. How about the 82 half calls? They've been pretty active this week, about 2,100 contracts going up. These are expiring in about four days. Again, that future's at an 83.12 right now. So these are fear... Fair bit in the money right now, doing about almost a thousand nine hundred eighty on Tuesday, and weirdly enough, nine hundred eighty again today. So maybe they came for him on Tuesday, deciding to get the heck out of Dodge today. <laughs> uh, the OI is only eight sixty two on this strike, so maybe they're opening again. It's just oddly specific volume numbers both days. The rest of the week, not much. So it's like somebody playing on the eighty two halves Tuesday and today. Listeners, nearly a thousand each. So. If you wanted some near data, we don't quite have zero day paper, but how about four day paper? We got that for you out there in WTI. All right, we hit on energy listeners. Let's see what else we've got lighting up our movers and shakers. You know, we do have a fair amount of livestock. We have feeder cattle number three to the dark side. We have lean hogs number three to the light side. We also have feeder cattle number five to the dark side sea ball and live cattle. Number one, dark side vol movers. Because I think we got to hit a little bit of the old ags as well. It's time to get our hands dirty exploring the latest options, trades, and trends in corn, wheat, soybeans, and more. It's time to talk ags. All right, everybody. Welcome to the wonderful world of ags. WTI, Nat Gas, and then Lean Hogs and Feeder Cattle. What other show on the planet? Gives you that array of content, listeners. Spoiler alert, none. Twifo stands alone in terms of that. Uh, we have our pick here. Let's go check out what's lighting it up. Let's, we know we haven't talked feeder cattle in forever on the show. And I don't know if we're going to do it today, though. 18,000 contracts. That's certainly something we can sink our teeth into, pun intended. Uh, 18,000 contracts on the feeder cattle front. Let's go to live cattle. 151,000 contracts. I think we're going to head out there. Live cattle, of course, also our number one dark side vol mover this week. My goodness. Now, these products, 151,000 contracts. I mean, these used to be trade by appointment. You had to know all the flow. And if you didn't know what the heck you were doing, what the paper was, you didn't have some insight into what was going on, you just forget about it. You were getting run over. I know a lot of Serious derivatives professionals who tilted at these windmills and came away much the worse for wear. Uh, these days, a very different beast. They're actually liquid marketplaces that you can get in and get out and get some things done. If, again, you're not too intimidated by this underlying, which right now live cattle at 185 and about a quarter off 2.275 or about one and a quarter percent on the week. That's, of course, since Monday here, listeners. There's a lot of, a lot of paper out here. What is the volume you might be asking to yourself in live cattle? By the way, they have a contract expiring in eight days. That future is at a 185 and about a quarter. The vol here about 12 and a third, up about one and three quarters points. So that's a weekly contract. So take that vol number with a bit of a grain of salt. If you go a little bit farther out, if you go out to, let's say, June, you're at about a 15. So that's roughly the apex of vol, looks like, on the term structure there out there in June. So interesting stuff. Uh, Skew-wise, last week, the puts 2.8% cheap. This week, 1.1% bid. So... Puts getting a little bit of life this week. The calls last week, nobody wanted them. 6.3% cheap. This week, 2.2% cheap. And in terms of action, man, it's kind of lighting it up all over the tape out here, which is kind of fascinating. And it's actually not in the April cycle that did exactly a third of the paper where the number one frequent offender is. It's actually out in June with the 180 puts. So the June cycle, by the way, listeners, doing 29% of the paper. So right on the heels of that front contract. June cycle has 71 days to go, so a little bit more meat on the bone. And again, the vol out here at about a 15. The puts, by the way, in June, 10.8% bid last week, so very juicy. Some stuff afoot here in June. This week, 5.4% bid, so coming in, getting cut exactly in half, pretty much. Uh, the calls last week, 7.6% cheap. This week, 5.2% cheap. So intriguing setups, it seems like, out here in June. That's probably why the number one most active contract out here are the 180 puts. I said, listeners... Uh, that June future is at about a 180 and about a half. So that 180 put is pretty much an add-the-money put, doing about 6,300 contracts this week, 3,400 of that on Monday, all closing there, 2,500 on Tuesday, again closing. So it seems like as we got closer to that 180 strike, folks maybe either taking some profits or getting the heck out of Dodge because they were scared, they were short those puts. Either way, bailing on a bunch of those puts there 
in June. Right behind it, we have the 175 puts, so about $5 out of the money puts, doing a little over 4,000 contracts this week. Uh, the big day there was on Monday as well, 2700 So looks kind of like some vertical action on Monday, the 180, 175, maybe put roll. The fact that they're doing a little bit less size on the second leg there, the 175 leg, if it is indeed a vertical, maybe an indication that they didn't exactly knock it out of the park. But again, it's close enough, 2700 versus 3400 It's not like they're doing half the paper or anything like that. So it could just be other paper going up on top of the 2700 that they wanted to roll on Monday. Either way, intriguing stuff. 1000 going up on Tuesday, the 175 puts as well. Uh, mostly opening there as well. So folks, closing on that 180 puts, opening on the 175 puts, probably got some roll action going on out there. Listen, let's scroll around a little bit as well, see if we can find any other interesting and or weirdo prints out here. How about the 178 puts? Again, those are going away in about eight days. So the front month here, listeners, going up 5,600 times this week. Almost all of that in two sessions. Tuesday, 2,400, and then yesterday, 3,200, and then seven on Monday, 41 today. So, you know, the OI is 5498. Both Tuesday and Wednesday were opening, and they add up to about exactly 5498. So somebody piled into these puts on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's more like to what I was talking about earlier about the trade by appointment. Get in there on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then forget about the rest of the week. These only have a week to go, so clock is ticking on these bad boys, but there are 5,500 of these 178 puts open. Again, that front future at a 185 and about a quarter, so... 178 doesn't seem to be within the game, but hey, we shall see. These things are on our movers and shakers reports every week for a reason. They can move out there, listeners. So intriguing stuff. Since we're hanging out in the ags, uh, let's hit an ag you folks are probably a little bit more familiar with. We have soybean meal number five to our dark side this week. We also have our old friend corn. We haven't talked about corn in forever. Kind of the king of the ags. In terms of volume, listeners, corn number three to the light side on our C vol this week, up 1.08 points. So you know what? Maybe we'll take a quick sojourn on this truncated episode this week, a truncated holiday episode, listeners, out to a little bit of corn. Let's see how much paper hitting the tape in corn this week, listeners. Actually, banger week. Listeners, 620,000 contracts on the tape out here in corn, listeners. So, again, banger week out here. I'm glad we pulled up a little bit of corn. We haven't checked in on corn in forever. The front future, listeners, 442 and a quarter up three points or about two-thirds of a percent. Looks like the lion's share of the action, though, going up in the May contract has about 43 percent of the paper that has 29 days to go again that future still at a 40 42 and a quarter the volume may be wondering 27 and a half you know what most of the term structure this is kind of what we're just talking about most of the term structure the vol is coming off aggressively and then we have this one <laughs> it's weird because corn also on our c vol gainers list this week but the whole term structure is coming in except for the May contract, which is up four and a half points, 27 and a half is where it's trading right now. And also nearly half of the volume going up there. So that's probably why it's a net vol gainer this week. But, and again, that 29 day expiration lines up pretty well with the 30 days of the C vol, but still a little, a little strange how these term structures have these little blips in them. Listeners in terms of skew, the May, the May puts almost 5% cheap, 4.9% cheap this week. Most of that gone. It's pretty much flat, 0.5% cheap. The calls last week, 2.4% cheap. This week, 3.1% bid. So the call is catching the bid, swinging nearly five points in the other direction. And that's probably because our number one action-packed mover this week, listeners, in corn, was the 440 call here in May. Again, that's a now in the money call. The contract's about 442 and a quarter in that in that May future. So Doing nearly 30,000 contracts, 27,437 to be precise, 14,279, slightly over half going up today. Listen, that's against an OI of 18,000 out there. So a lot of action going up out there today, listeners, in these 440s here in May. And then uh, 6, 000, actually about 5,500 going up on Monday, mostly opening there. 5,000 on Wednesday, 
mostly opening 2,500 on Tuesday, slightly closing. So a little bit of back and forth, which again, this is kind of the at the money strike. So we expect a little bit of churn and burn out there. Uh, right behind it, we have the four halves. So 440 is a little bit too close, maybe a little bit too in the money for you. The 450 is coming up with about 25,000 contracts right behind it. The big day also today, 9,255. That's against an OI of about 20,000. Looking for some vertical action this week. Looks like about 8,500 going up on Wednesday, slightly closing there. 4,100 on Monday, opening 3,000 exactly on Tuesday, also opening. So again, back and forth, opening to closing. There's potential for some rolls here, but I don't see a ton of a ton of uh, paper that looks like it out here. So intriguing stuff afoot out here in corn. Let's go a little bit beyond the the hot May cycle. See what else catches our eye out here in corn, listeners. If we go a little bit farther out, we go out to July, about 85 days. The 500, the par calls there, doing about 14,000 contracts this week. That future at a 454 and a half, so slightly richer than that front future we're talking about right now. If we go all the way out to D's of this year, listeners, the four half puts, the 450 puts, going up almost 11,000 times this week as well. That's at a future there. That's at 477 and a half. So four half puts, about $22.5 out of the money there, going up about 11,000 times, almost all of that today, 9,100 going up today against an OI of about 20,000. So... A lot, of, a lot of paper kind of across the board, which, again, you kind of be expected. Corn kind of lighting it up on this truncated holiday week. And this is the truncated edition of Twifo, listeners. So let's get out of here now. A little bit of your futures options feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for futures options feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options. Facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at the options You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider Radio Network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com. All right, everybody. Welcome to your Futures Options Feedback. If you're hanging out in our live, you can always join us there with your questions, your comments, your insights. A lot of people feeling for Sean, our old buddy Sean, in our live chat. <laughs> Option God saying that's rough. Yeah, yeah, that uh, I felt bad for him. Uh, to uh, we have uh, Nichols. I remember the old lumber watch. Poor guy. Yeah, kind of rough to buy the top of the lumber market, listeners. Only to have most of your fence get destroyed a couple of years later. And good luck getting insurance to reimburse you for the actual cost of that fence. They'll probably pay you what lumber is going for right now, listeners. So either way, you're taking a bit of a drubbing out there. Uh, we got other folks chiming in. Age of Delaquare saying it's all about Nat Gas. Yeah. The show is almost all about Nat Gas these days. It's kind of inescapable. You know, we've jokingly or maybe only half jokingly titled the show that a few times. You know, Nat Gas is in inescapable. It's just the mover. And how often do you see an underlying that's hanging out under $2 that is doing this much options volume? It grows almost every week. It used to be 400 maybe a banger week, half a million. Now it's threatening a million and it keeps getting cheaper. It's defying the options logic. I should bring the Viceroy on and pick his brain about this because he would probably be deeply offended that nearly a million contracts a week are trading in a underlying that's around one and three quarters right now. <laughs> Frank Natgas is always a movie. Yeah, can't escape Natgas. So if you're not down with Natgas, I don't know what to tell you, listeners. Until it stops moving, we're going to have to keep talking about it out there. And it seems to have the bit in its teeth right now. Uh, do you folks have the bit in your teeth when it comes to... Our questions of the week. Last week, we asked you, how do you like to use your options, income or premium harvesting, protection or hedging, speculation or other? And 54.2% of you saying income or premium harvesting, 39.6% uh, going for the old speculation route, only 6.3% of you hedging, getting some downside out there. Even though we said before, those puts are kind of cheap if you wanted to hedge and you're worried about these levels. Not the worst time, but only 6.3% of you going that route. This week, we have a couple of questions of the week. One of them near and dear to 
the heart of this show, which is Q1 drawing to a close. Which market segment are you most excited about for the rest of the year? Gave you three choices and the infamous other equities, crypto, or volatility itself. Remember, that is pretty much an asset class these days as well. In the past, we would have added in commodities. We would have added in metals. You might have added in fixed income. This time we went other because it encompasses all of those. And sure enough, a lot of you, uh, like our buddy in the chat there, Age Del Aquarius, said he's voted other because I'm watching interest rates first and foremost. You are not alone. A few people wrote in for rates out there. It seems like rates get more love when we put other than they do when we put rates as a category. When we put rates as a category, nobody chooses them. When we put other, everybody writes in for rates. I don't know what that says about rates, but that's what our audience is up to out there. And right now, listeners, you might be thinking equities. Maybe you're thinking crypto because both of those have been on a tier of late, but you would be out of step with our audience, listeners, 43.3% choosing vol right now. Again, volatility, at least in the broad equity sense, fairly anemic. So what are you doing out there in vol right now? Are you playing that erosion trade? It still exists. It's still out there. It's getting a little bit more challenging now. A lot of the ETPs are kind of getting at some pretty low levels. Uh, the overall level of vol also pretty low. The contango is still pretty steep. So you can play off that a little bit, but... It's not as exciting as it was. You could, of course, look at these low vol levels and want to load up on some upside. That's a difficult trade to make profitable. But if you catch that one moment when vol pops, you're looking pretty good. So that could certainly be what you're up to out there. Or perhaps you're looking across the board some of these other products you're talking about here. Nat gas certainly juicy from a vol perspective. We didn't limit it to equity vol. That's what most people usually read into that. But you could be trading vol on a lot of products out there. So either way. Vol coming at it, number one, 43.3%, followed by number two, crypto, 30% exactly, listeners. Only 20% of you come in here for equities this week, which is kind of fascinating, and 6.7% for other, like we said, a lot of you folks writing in for a little bit of the old fixed income. All right, listeners, unfortunately, that music means that's going to do it for this Just the Facts, ma'am, edition Oh, still in about 45 minutes. Trying to keep it short. You folks always drag me longer, but we love doing it, listeners. Uh, that's going to do it for Twipe. It's going to do it for the network this week. Again, off tomorrow for the Good Friday holiday. But you know what? Glutton for punishment that I am. Not going to leave you hanging on Vol Views or probably the Oddities front on the pro side tomorrow as well. I won't be live, of course, but we'll get you some stuff on the feeds, I think, for tomorrow. So look for that on the Vol Views feed. Maybe a nice aggregation of some of the fun debates we had about what is killing vol out there in the equity market right now we had a lot of a lot of fun debate on that this week might cut that together for you vol views folks also break down a little bit of crystal ball action probably because that's always fun and because i like you pro folks i'll probably throw together a little bit of options oddities for you this week as well even though i will be traveling tomorrow i will be traveling on monday as well i will be actually i was just talking to the flow master i will be literally outside the door of SIBO east Heading out to New York City, maybe maybe doing some touristy stuff, maybe hitting a little Ellis Island, raise the old torch on Liberty Island out there. Should be kind of fun doing the New York tourist scene over the next few days. So that should be kind of fun. So I'll be sure to wave to the Flowmaster because he's literally looking down on, on Liberty Island from Cebo East over there. Maybe I'll have a chance to bump into him. Uh, so no live shows on Monday. We'll have some fun stuff for you on Tuesday. Then, of course, boot camp. On the pro front, you already got it. It's waiting for you on your feed. The rest of you will get it on demand on Wednesday. And then we're back again live next Thursday with the option block and another episode of This Week in Futures Options. Go forth. Have a fun holiday weekend. We'll see you back here live next Thursday. Another episode of Twifo. Stay safe out there, everybody. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. This broadcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute trading advice or the solicitation of purchases or sale of any futures or options. The rulebook of the applicable exchange should be consulted as the authoritative source on all current contract specifications.
You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.